Well, you know, it's that time of week again. It's Friday, which means it's time to deploy. Joining me as always is Jim. Uh, Jim, uh, you look, you and your dog look really comfortable. How was your week? I am comfortable, actually. We had uh, some holidays over the last weekend, so it's a short week this week. Probably why we're both so relaxed. He's, he's tired. He's been down the beach running around chasing uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, Life of a yeah. dog. I love it. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Great. How about you? How are you? Very good. Uh, still recovering from jet lag. It's weird. As you get older, uh, it's harder to shake. So uh, as you know, last week, I got back from KubeCon in Paris and uh, still shaking off the jet lag cobwebs there, so to speak. So but a very productive week. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on. So let's go ahead and get into it. So uh, lots of stuff happening at Octopus Deploy. These are some of the uh, articles and uh, goings ons at both Octopus and at CodeFresh. We're just highlight here. This is an article written by Andy. He's on the marketing side entitled Four Steps for Getting Over a DevOps Plateau. So the steps needed to level up in a challenging video game are very similar to what you'd need to do to rev up your DevOps journey. So similar to, uh, you know, I'm, it's been a while since I've played video games, but, you know, if you're looking to up your game, pardon the pun, that was intentional. Uh, if you're looking to up your game on the DevOps side, uh, looking to get over that plateau on the DevOps side, um, there's some analogies to playing video games, actually, that uh, Andy here has highlighted. So um, this Andy, of course, is being the fact that he's uh, written this article, they, they basically are touting Octopus Deploy. But uh, as part of this, um, he's touting the fact that, you know, the, the four lessons are uh, find ways to do things more efficiently. So automation, that's the name of the game. And so whether it's video game playing, uh, beating the, the final boss, etc. in a more efficient manner, or getting your pipelines all green, or uh, doing deployments with Octopus, potentially. Uh, finding ways to do things more efficiently is always going to be the best way. Um, incidentally, um, I don't know if you know this, but Andy's actually a Street Fighter Six wonk. So he, uh. Uh, he plays a lot of Street Fighter, so that's why he's making this analogy as uh, part of this article here. So... It's been a long time since I've played Street Fighter. Man, I yeah. didn't realize they were up to version six. So they Special breed, the I think one. Street Fighter walks too. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, number two, be brave enough to retire successful techniques. So obviously, you know, this is uh, more of that, uh, this is the way we've always done things here sort of mantra, I think. Um, so sometimes you need to rev your tools and techniques. Um, and sometimes uh, kind of like old habits are like comfortable leather. You got to toss them aside once in a while. So... Uh, being able to look at your uh, pipelines and possibly look at uh, revving things, possibly adopting new techniques and new technologies. Um, this certainly is applicable to uh, the world of Kubernetes, for example. So um, he again applies the analogy of Street Fighter VI uh, as part of this. Number three, accept that change can take time to settle. So any new habit is uh, going to be hard to adopt. Uh, I think it's like, what, three weeks to adopt a new habit? Something like that, human nature, so muscle memory and the like. And uh, if you're trying to institute in new things, so using the uh, sort of analogy to you know video game development in the DevOps world, this would be like, hey, I want to institute RBAC, or hey, I want to institute unit tests, or uh, we want to leverage Octopus for deployments uh, in a continuous delivery sort of style. Um, this can take a while to actually get, the dust will take time to settle, so to speak. So this is pretty, uh, pretty, so pretty common, I would imagine, Jim. Yeah, change is hard. Change is hard in any shape it comes in. Yep, that's true. And number four, take inspiration from others. So uh, we all stand on the shoulders of giants in this industry. We definitely look, you know, it's kind of like uh, that scene of Wilson in Home Improvement looking over the fence, the neighbor's fence, uh, trying to see what's going on. And uh, mm -hmm. some people might say if you, do, if you perk yourself too high enough, you might get offended by what you see. Others may be envious, but... I think it's always useful to see what others are doing and hey, oh, they're doing they're doing automated builds over there or hey, they're using Octopus. Uh, let's see what they're doing better than we are. So take inspiration from others. Also, the community is is going to be super important here. So this is definitely something to to leverage. And uh, certainly this is kind of like putting your quarter up on the dash. Uh, sorry, I'm using old references here. But uh, <laughs> you know, I'm a kid of the 80s. What do you want? So putting your quarter up on the dash of the, uh, the video game console and uh, waiting your next turn to borrow what you've just watched. So it's a good analogy. I like this. Great article by Andy. This is up on the news stack. Yeah. Cool. Uh, as always, we've got a lot of events that are coming up. Uh, we've just recently added these ones to our events page. So we're doing a lot of events with Redgate in the next few weeks. So we've got one in Sydney and one in London next week. Uh, this is going to be featuring database deployments. So 
I know that uh, you're a big database deployment type of guy, Jim. Just kidding. But uh, <laughs> a lot of folks are using Octopus for this. So they're using tools like Flyway, they're using the Redgate system, uh, a platform and a suite of tools that are available there. And they're also using Octopus in, in conjunction with that. And so uh, as part of this, we'll be partnering with our good friends at Redgate uh, for two events here in Sydney and London. We also have an event coming up in Frankfurt as well for those uh, in Germany. If you want to come out, feel free. It's a free event. Our next big event is Retail Technology Show, which is in London. That's going to be April 24th to 25th. This one's going to be interesting. It's going to feature all the stuff that we have going on on the retail side of things. So if you want to check this out, you can go to octopus.com. If I can type slash retail. Um, this is a sort of one-stop shop page that we have for detailing all the things that we do for supporting tenants. Um, what we like to call tenants, but you can think of these as stores or point of sale systems, etc. A lot of customers, we have lots of customers that do this. And so if you're at all interested, you can check this out at slash retail. And we highlight some of the features that are there. We highlight, obviously, tenants as part of this um, and then some of the other capabilities as well. So we'll be that retail technology show talking about this and other things. And then following that, we've got our Redgate Summit uh, our seminar uh, uh, in Dusseldorf. And then we've got a bunch of other events as well. So if you want to find out more, go to check out octopus.com slash events. Now, Jim, I know you're a huge AI guy, right? You're, you're all about the LLMs, right? And, yeah, uh, well, they basically do my job for me, so thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sorry, no, you know, we're not trying to tell tales here, but you know, um, <laughs> this is a blog post written by Matt Casperson. Uh, he and others have been doing a lot of experiments with LLMs, and this is a blog post that we just published called the Octopus AI Experiment. And what this is is basically a Chrome extension. Uh, a plugin that will allow you to uh, basically leverage prompts to query against uh, a model that is against Octopus. So in this example here is a query that says, list any vulnerabilities reported in the deployment logs of the EKS Octopub front end project in the security space. Display the results in a markdown table. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to find scenarios that will be useful for customers that can leverage LLMs and natural language query so that customers can get answers to the questions they have more effectively. Now, this is not the only thing that can be done. There's lots of ways in which you can exploit this. So for example, extract any URLs contained in the deployment logs, again, leveraging that capability. Um, this is another one, so list all the project variables and steps, including disabled steps, they are used in for the EKS Octopub front end product. So these and other types of questions, these queries that you may want to ask uh, of Octopus, this is something that we're looking at supporting. And this is a limited time, limited time offer, right? You know, everything must go. But we've got this, um, this uh, Chrome plugin that we have available up on the Chrome store. And uh, you can download it and use it against your instances to ask questions. And so this is a very interesting sort of side project. We initially published this out through the Slack community channel. And we started asking folks like, hey, would you be interested in participating? And so these are some of the things that uh, Matt Casperson and friends are are kind of playing with. What are your thoughts on this? This is really interesting. I didn't, I haven't seen this yet. Yeah. yeah. I know we've been thinking about like what AI and Octopus, what, how does it make sense? This, this makes sense. Like we were just talking the other day, uh, me and a bunch of, Developers were working in an instance, and we're like, uh, "We know there's a project in here somewhere. We don't even know where it is, uh, and go. we don't actually know exactly what it's called." And like, even that would be really useful. Let alone, yeah. sort of, you know, security vulnerabilities, which steps are used by what? That's something we're doing a lot at the moment too, because we're sort of um, trying to rebuild significant parts of the insides of Octopus, and we're like, right, um, you know, which things use this step? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Love it. So like I said, it's just available. It's available as an extension right now. So you can go up to the Chrome Web Store and uh, check it out. Uh, this won't be available for everyone. Uh, sorry, for for uh, all time. But it's just an experiment right now. We're trying to trying to figure it out. And the reason why we published it as a Chrome extension is because it's easy, right? Chrome extensions aren't hard. They're easy to write. Um, who knows what this will look like in the future? It may continue to be a Chrome extension, or it may live as something else in the future if we decide to make it available. But we thought an experiment, it's better to kind of kick the tires with an idea like this to see what folks think. And so this is what Matt and, and friends are 
building out and they would love your feedback. So feel free to read the blog post. It's available now up on octopus.com slash blog, and you can download the extension and let us know what you think. Uh, this is something that we're kind of toying with at the moment. And I know Matt and friends would be very curious to, to hear what you have to say. Have you had much feedback on it yet? Uh, this blog post went live today, so <laughs> right, I haven't heard anything yet. I haven't had a chance to sync with Matt, but um, hopefully we'll have some feedback rolling in soon. I'm really optimistic. I think a lot of folks will have some really interesting scenarios that we haven't even thought about that will probably come through uh, this this vector, which is cool. Awesome. Uh, we did a webinar earlier today. Ships and Alex hosted this webinar entitled Top 3 Deployment Patterns from Experience. So. Ships and Alex have done a lot of work with uh, finance customers, with retail customers. And what they've done is they've summarized or boil us, boiled it down to this au jus of awesomeness, uh, which is basically the patterns that they see. They've, they've summarized it into these three cake takeaways. So um, make sure your strategy is deeply contextual for your business. Make sure your strategy should solve the problems you have today and make sure that it's repeatable, reliable and maintainable. So the common tenants you'll hear when we talk about octopus, but um, if you're at all curious, uh, they actually go through uh, a lot of the sort of uh, architecture. They they use a lot of whimsical diagrams when describing this stuff. You know, the things you have to think about when setting up your pipelines, uh, how you may want to configure octopus. I thought this was a really interesting presentation because it's highly interactive, and this is a bit of a teaser for what they're going to be doing. Uh, this is a presentation they're going to be delivering at Open Source Summit in Seattle later this month. And so we use this as an opportunity for them to kind of practice their presentation uh, by presenting it as a webinar. And so this is what they're doing for this. But uh, it was a great, great way to see what they're thinking. And this is all based on uh, conversations we've had with real live customers. And so this is what they tell us what is important. And it's really interesting when you take a look at the the types of customers that we're dealing with, right? Like, so if you're dealing with retail customers, it's kind of easy, right? So a retail customer shop will typically shut down during the evening, early morning. So that's your deployment window. Whereas like finance, like banks are like, we can't shut down like at all, like any hour of outage is millions of dollars to us, right? So uh, it's kind of interesting to see how these things kind of play out in terms of, you know, strategy. So they, they go through all of this and, and talk a little bit about, you know, what you have to think about. It's not just, here's the tool away you go. It's more like, no, there's real world concerns we have to think about. So ships and Alex talked a great deal about this, which was awesome. These are always interesting kind of problems, eh? Dealing with the, uh, the edge cases. Yeah, definitely. And it always surprises me hearing, you know, we, we deal with such a wide range of customers. Like, you go, oh, I never thought about your scenario. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah that's it's right. always a new one. Yeah. You you actually have real customers. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. Like, oh, yeah, I cool. think it was um, cool. I know what they're like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, There's another uh, webinar that we hosted. Bob uh, uh, hosted this one called Streamlining Deployments, uh, Lessons Learned from Building a Pay Path for 100, 150 Plus Developers. And so Bob uh, delivered this presentation kind of citing what he learned implementing this uh, across an organization that he was a part of, uh, separating out um, a pipeline and deployment process. And so if you're all curious about sort of like those high level discussions or thoughts around this, you can check out Bob's uh, thoughts on this through his uh, webinar, which he hosted. Both of these, by the way, are up on our YouTube channel. So you'll find these over at uh, YouTube. So slash YouTube or sorry, slash Octopus Deploy. Uh, those are all the videos that we have there. And you can see we've published um, these two recently. Uh, this one we just published an hour ago. So feel free to check those out. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. Speaking of videos, we have more webinars coming up. This one is turning out to be immensely popular, Jim. I don't know if you know, but uh, we've got a new Kubernetes agent that's going to be coming out soon. Uh, this is on our roadmap. But uh, April 9th, next week, we're going to host a webinar um, that's going to talk a lot about the who, what, where, when, and why of the Kubernetes agent. So the Kubernetes agent is something that we've been thinking long and hard about, and it's on our roadmap here at roadmap.octopus.com. Uh, Kit has talked about this extensively, and this is something that a lot of customers are looking forward to. And so we thought, well, we might as well do a webinar. And uh, even if it's not available yet, we're going to kind of showcase what it does, how it works, why we built it. Those are the most important things. Uh, this has already got a lot of popular. Uh, it's it's a very popular on the registration side, so we're seeing a lot of registrations for this. Uh, later on this month, we've got our monthly 101 featuring myself, and then. Um, wrapping things up for this month, we've got Kit and Bob doing a webinar version of our white paper, which we recently published, entitled A Leader's Guide to Kubernetes CD at Scale. So 
This is a white paper that we have available at slash white papers. Um, this is something that we made available at KubeCon in Paris. It's about 30 pages or so. If you're thinking about doing Kubernetes deployments um, and you're thinking about it in the context of Octopus, this white paper will answer a lot of those questions. And so we've decided to host a webinar featuring uh, exactly what we think about that. And it's uh, your chance to ask questions if you are so curious. Hey, it's all the things. Nice. Colin recently on his way home from KubeCon um, visited the folks over in uh, Israel. Uh, he visited our Tel Aviv office, uh, the CodeFresh folks over there. And so these are some of the folks that uh, that he got to have lunch with. Uh, of course, he was uh, on his way back from KubeCon. So, you know, you got to have your customary lightsaber photo with Dan. And uh, this is a uh, this is uh, Laurent giving a demo. Uh, I love it when you got like everyone surrounded a laptop. But uh, the reason why Laurent is sitting here is because he actually he accidentally broke his ankle um, just a few days before KubeCon, so he had to sit the whole oh. event with his uh, his foot in a sling. But um, yeah, we had a great time there, and these are some of the uh, the photos that uh, Colin uh, shared through his LinkedIn post. And so it was great to uh, see him over in Israel visiting with customers, or sorry, visiting with the office there. Uh, Steve published recently his uh, certification for GitOps. He's now GitOps certified. I know a lot of folks will be like, wow, you know, sort of thing. Like, it was a scary photo. It's like, ah, look at me. But, you know, he's, he passed his uh, certification there. Um, we Incidentally, the GitOps certification is the most popular certification that we have through CodeFresh. Um, so if you're looking for a certification around fundamentals, et cetera, uh, we have them available there. We are publishing our third uh, certification uh, in Q3 later this year. Uh, we mentioned that in the last deploy on Friday. So make sure to keep in touch on that. Um, we are also going to be at GitOpsCon as part of Open Source Summit in Seattle. Um, so we've got a session there entitled Progressive Delivery for Microservices Using Argo CD, or sorry, Using Argo Rollouts and the Downward API. Uh, Costas is going to be hosting that. And we'll have a booth there at the event. So feel free, if you're in Seattle and you happen to be at Open Source Summit, check out GitOpsCon. We'll be there and we'll have a booth available and we'll have some swag and all that great stuff, which is awesome. And then finally, wrapping things up, Dan uh, recently got interviewed by the folks over at 0800 DevOps. Um, this is a podcast where they talked about a whole bunch of things, including KubeCon, which we just came at, GitOps, Dora, regulations, and the future of continuous delivery. So make sure to stay tuned for that. If you haven't listened to 0800's DevOps, uh, it's a great podcast. Uh, so uh, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so. And that, as they say, was the week that was. So there you go. Any final thoughts to wrap up the show? No, so much stuff though. Heaps of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. lots of stuff. I, I think I'm gonna try and hit the couch just like your dog there. I think yeah. that looks really that looks like a great idea for a Friday. So there you go. <laughs> well, anyways, if you happen to stumble across this video, feel free to give us a like and subscribe to this channel for any updates. You'll see them posted. We post videos probably twice a week, three times a week. And uh until next time, happy deployments, everyone. We'll see you next week. Take care.